I'm Allison Jingris, and when it comes to saints, I have an entire saint posse. When I came back to my faith about 12 years ago, one of the things I rediscovered that is so amazing about the Catholic faith is our cloud of witnesses, our amazing saints in heaven. And I wanting so wanting to become a better Catholic, I was looking to those who had kind of mastered it, right? When you're trying to learn a new skill, trying to get better at something, you look at somebody who's done it well. You maybe read how they did it, you read uh, their experience with it, but you also want to model some of their behaviors and some of the ways that they came to master their skill. Well, the saints have mastered getting into heaven. So aside from reading the, what they have to, to say and, and praying for their intercession and for their help, there are a few that I've kind of become, kind of made my friends, kind of like really, really um, spend time trying to, to emulate their relationship with Christ. And even along the way, a couple of them have become have kind of like, I feel like they've sought me out and we have a friendship based on um, their finding me and Faustina it's definitely in that category. I was first introduced to St. Faustina by a Polish priest that was at our parish. He had such a devotion and love for her, and it was just when people were starting to first hear about her, she was first becoming venerated, and his pride of having someone from his country um, on the road to sainthood, as you can imagine, was pretty amazing. So he was my first introduction. And then my spiritual director, what had a great devotion to her, to St. Faustina, and he would have Tuesday night divine mercy hours where we'd come together, pray the divine mercy. He would read from her diary and then share some some of his reflections on her, uh, on her life and, and on his understanding. And, and more importantly, how we could take her encounters with Christ and her relationship with Christ and make it part of our own spiritual journey, how we could grow closer to him through her experiences and her words. So those were the first kind of two ways that I started to first find out about her. And I bought the diary and I read a little bit of it, but I didn't really have what I would call like a friendship. I hadn't added her to the posse yet until we had a um, priest come to our parish who had well like 250 relics that he would put out for display. He'd do a really great presentation beforehand and then you're invited over to venerate the relics. And so before we were sent over to spend this time in prayer and asking for intercession, he said, now you're going to think this is crazy, but one of these saints is going to want to become your friend. He's like, I've seen it again and again, and I don't know how they'll introduce themselves to you, but trust me, you'll know when that happens. So as they were the friend and we kind of looked at each other like, um, that's weird, but okay. I was still fairly new to the faith and fairly new to the whole saint idea. Uh, but I really was intrigued that we had all of these relics that um, we could go and spend like, it, it felt like walking into heaven. And we, there, uh, there's just that moment of just peace and, and joy really being surrounded by so many holy relics. So we're going up and down the aisles, and uh, every single time we would get to one, I would do the same exact thing. I would take my crucifix. I would bless myself with the little Thecla, which is a little, little tiny monstrance, um, reliquary. There's different names for it, but little reliquary. And, and I would take it, and I would bless myself. And then I would take my crucifix, and I would touch it. And I did this again and again and again until... I got to the end of one of the lines and there was Faustina's relic. And I did the same thing I'd done about a hundred times previously. I blessed myself, I touched it to my cru crucifix, and I went to put her down. And we were entangled, Faustina and I. I was completely wrapped up. I have no idea how I did that. And I couldn't put her down. Now we'd already been told we couldn't take any of these relics home. So I start to panic a little bit and I'm trying to stay composed because there's people around me praying. I'm trying to stay um, respectful to their prayer. And my girlfriend with my friend with me is laughing hysterically. This became a Lucy and Ethel moment, a little Catholic Lucy and Ethel moment. 
as she's trying to take, I'm like, trying to take my picture. I'm like, no, 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 do not take my picture. Just get me out of this. And we're trying again to be respectful, but uh, I just, it was, it was too much. Clearly, I'm no longer entangled with Faustina. So we did successfully get my, get untangled. And she, I did allow my friend to take a picture of the reliquary, but not with me attached to it. It was clear in that moment that Faustina was calling me into friendship. And little did I know how much of a friend she would become over the years to come from that. Uh, during that time, we had um, been adopt preparing to adopt a little girl from China who was four years old and we had learned she was deaf. We were very open to a child with special needs and whatever God had willed. And um, our little girl was deaf. And I was excited we had to have bring her home. We had a waiting period of almost nine months, which is kind of unheard of. Uh, we had to wait almost three years to get matched. And then it took almost nine months to get her home where that usually takes about six to eight weeks. So that was a really difficult time. And I spent a lot of time in prayer, as you can imagine, waiting for that moment to be able to go to China and bring her home and very worried and struggling to trust God, which my spiritual director would constantly remind me to spend time with Faustina. If anybody knew how to trust God and how to teach us to trust God, it was Faustina. The words he gave her, right? Jesus, I trust in you. One of the nights that I was particularly upset, I'd gone to dinner with a friend and she, she was just trying to help me just sort through all the things I'd have to be, be, be prepared for when Faithy came home. And in her kindness of trying to help me to be prepared, she actually caused me to panic quite a bit when she started to say, well, how you, I was homeschooling at the time. You don't have the skills to homeschool a deaf child. How are you going to do that? And she had all these other things that I had to can be concerned about, like communicating and just different things I hadn't thought of. And I was in full blown panic mode when I got home from our relaxing dinner together. <laughs> And I remember going into Faith's bedroom, which we had got prepared because we didn't know when we get the call to go get her. And I grabbed a book, which I thought was my Bible, and I plopped myself down on Faith's floor and started to pray. And I reached, I was, I, and, uh, in my prayers, I was like, Lord, I am miserable. Like, I don't know why you called me to this. You know, I know you don't make mistakes, but I think I might be your first because I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be her mom. I don't know... How to, I'm just, I don't know why you're, you're calling me to this work because clearly I'm not the right person for it. And then I grabbed for the book, looking for solace in God's word, which is really a great place to find solace. If, if I've got to be honest with you, God's word is just, it's living, it's breathing, it's dynamic, and it's such a gift. But lo and behold, in my hand was not God's word, but St. Faustina's diary, which looked a lot like my Bible and it was right next to it. As I opened it, I, 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 I have a hard time reading big books from cover to cover. Never read the Bible from cover to cover, and I never read Faustina's um, diary from cover to cover. I just opened it. And there upon the page, my eyes fell to these words. My daughter, what you have said is true. And now these are the words that Jesus is speaking to Faustina. But clearly, as I continue to read, you'll see he was speaking to me. In that moment you are very miserable Jesus can continues and it pleased me to carry out this work of mercy precisely through you who are nothing but misery itself way to sugarcoat Jesus way to sugarcoat do not fear I will not leave you alone do whatever you can in this matter I will accomplish everything that is lacking in you you know what is within your power to do do that. Okay, th then he comes in with the comfort. First, he kind of gets your attention. <laughs> Validate your feelings. <laughs> Definitely validated my feelings. I can't do this. And he comes in with this beautiful, yes, you can, because of your faith in me, because of your trust in me, nothing is impossible for God. Matthew 19, 26, nothing's impossible for God. What may be impossible for you 
God can do, and he can do it through you, just like our Blessed Mother. All she had to do was say, yes, I, I trust in you. I believe in you. I have faith. Faustina had such faith in Jesus. She knew that she would be doing his will to love him, to, to write down those words that he gave her, knowing that other people would be blessed by them. I don't know why he called us to adopt this beautiful little girl from China. I think often of all the beautiful things he's done in her life. And sometimes I, I look at it like it's my blessing, but honestly, it's, it's so many more blessings involved. She is, um, she shows me God's love every single day by all of the, the wonderful things I realize that she now has um, able, all things she's able to have that she's here with us, you know, being able to have a language which she didn't have until she got here, being able to um, learn a, a, how to read and write. And, and my friend was right. I did not have those gifts and talents, but God showed me what to do with her. We sent her to deaf school, which she loves. She loves her school. Then a few years ago, we learned she had scoliosis, so severe that if it had gone unchecked, um, it could have ended her life early. But now, because, um, from another beautiful saint in her life, Saint Gemma Galgani, we had a special favor, special intercession, no surgery needed, and she's well on her way to um, having a normal life, and her spine has corrected, which is truly miraculous. Our friends the saints, their modern saints, teach us how to become saints, to look at the blessings that they had in their lives, the, the interactions they had with Jesus, and not see them as so distant and so far away. We are all called to be saints, and God doesn't ask the impossible. He said nothing's impossible for God, including the things he asks of us. You are created for sainthood. You were created for holiness. And then some days it may feel very difficult. You may feel like nothing but misery itself. With God's word, Jesus' words to Faustina, so give me courage and comfort again and again and again. Do what you can in that matter, and I will do the rest. How many matters has God called you to that you think, ah, I know you don't make mistakes, but this one feels like one. I can't. I don't know how, I'm overwhelmed. Those moments are gonna happen. And that's what's so beautiful about having faith in our, having a Catholic faith and having this cloud of witnesses to lean on, to having your own Saint Posse to turn to, to learn from. I've been uh, very close to Faustina now all these years. And again and again, I still turn to her I still um, follow her example. I love reading her diary. She's taught me so much. She taught me about going to adoration in that diary. She talks about those encounters with Christ that we can all have in the Eucharist, receiving him, spending time with him. Even when we're not able to receive him, she talks about that in the diary and how that is a blessing in itself, that holy longing that gets created. There is nothing that ha will happen or has happened that the scriptures or the saints or the traditions of our church don't talk about. All answers are available to us. It just requires us to go looking, be open to them. I know that day that Faustina was able to befriend me because even though I was a little skeptical at how this was going to happen, I believed it would happen. I did walk into that room of 250 or so saint relics, knowing that one of those holy people wanted to be my friend and wanted to guide me closer to Christ because they were so close to him here and now especially in heaven. And they want that for us. They want that for me. They want that for you. So if you haven't yet added Saint Faustina, to your Saint Posse. I invite you to learn more about her, to 
read, you can find her diary online. Or of course, you could purchase it. But just to pray and ask for her to become your friend. Oh, and about the whole Lucy and Ethel moment. A few years ago, I was invited to write in a book, our friend Faustina. And in my chapter, I talked about being entangled with Faustina, but I also had to do a little research. And I read one of her um, biographies. And in it, a neighbor who knew Faustina very well was quoted in saying, Faustina had a great sense of humor. In fact, had she not entered the convent, I'm pretty sure she could have been a comedian. Yeah, that was said about a saint, the same saint who decided to entangle me to get my attention. God bless you, and I hope that you find the perfect saint during our conference on modern saints to add to your saint pod.